Hello everyone, and welcome back to the final part of our series on cellular respiration. In this video, we'll be discussing the key question. How many ATP molecules are produced when one molecule of glucose is fully oxidized? Let's dive into the details and break down the steps of cellular respiration to understand this process. Cellular respiration is the process by which cells generate energy by utilizing nutrients from food. The primary source of energy is carbohydrates. When the body needs energy, complex carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. This glucose then goes through a series of reactions, ultimately generating energy. The entire process can be divided into three main stages, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Let's start with glycolysis. I'll cover only the steps relevant to this video, but if you want a more detailed breakdown, check out the description box. In glycolysis, glucose is first converted into glucose 6-phosphate, using one ATP molecule. Next, fructose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, utilizing another ATP molecule. So far, we've used two ATP molecules with no ATP production. Then, this 6-carbon compound splits into two 3-carbon molecules, known as glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate. During subsequent reactions, two NADH molecules are produced when each molecule of glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Moving forward, in the seventh step, two ATP molecules are produced when 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3-phosphoglycerate. Finally, in the last step, two more ATP molecules are produced when phosphonolpyruvate is converted into pyruvate. Summarizing the energy yield, four ATP molecules are produced, but since we used two ATP molecules initially, the net gain from glycolysis is two ATP molecules. Additionally, two NADH molecules are produced during glycolysis. Now let's move on to the second stage, the Krebs cycle. The final product of glycolysis is pyruvate, but the Krebs cycle starts with acetyl-CoA. So, there is a linking reaction that converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA, producing 1-NADH. I've discussed the linking reaction and Krebs cycle in detail in this video. Once acetyl-CoA enters the Krebs cycle, it produces its first NADH when isocitrate is converted into alpha-ketoglutarate. Another NADH is produced when alpha-ketoglutarate is converted into succinyl-CoA. The cycle also produces one molecule of GTP when succinyl-CoA is converted into succinate. After that, one molecule of FADH2 is produced when succinate is converted into fumarate. Finally, the Krebs cycle produces its third NADH when malate is converted into oxaloacetate. Let's summarize the energy production from the Krebs cycle and the linking reaction. The Krebs cycle produces three molecules of NADH, one molecule of GTP which is equivalent to ATP, and one molecule of FADH2 per cycle. Additionally, the linking reaction produces one NADH. So, together, the linking reaction and Krebs cycle produce four NADH. Since glycolysis produces two pyruvates, this means two Krebs cycles occur, resulting in 8 NADH, 2 GTP or ATP, and 2 FADH2 molecules. In total, for the first two stages of cellular respiration, we have collected 12 electron carriers, 10 NADH and 2 FADH2 molecules. These molecules then enter the electron transport chain to yield further energy. The third stage of cellular respiration, oxidative phosphorylation, involves the electron transport chain and ATP synthase. The electron transport chain consists of four complexes, along with ATP synthase. Out of these four complexes, complexes 1, 3, and 4 are involved in transporting protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Specifically, complex 1 and complex 3 each pump four protons across the membrane. Complex 4 pumps two protons. 
The flow of protons through ATP synthase drives the synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. This process generates the majority of ATP during cellular respiration. Now, let's see how these 12 carriers produce ATP. NADH molecules enter the electron transport chain at complex 1, while FADH2 enters at complex 2. When one NADH is oxidized, it transfers electrons to complex 1. As electrons move through the electron transport chain, they drive the transport of protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Each NADH molecule results in the transport of 10 protons across the membrane. Since it takes 4 protons to generate one ATP molecule, the oxidation of one NADH generates approximately 2.5 ATP molecules. Similarly, Two NADH molecules produce around 5 ATP molecules, and a total of 10 NADH molecules produce approximately 25 ATP molecules. From the 10 NADH molecules, we get approximately 25 ATP molecules. Now let's determine how many ATP molecules are produced from FADH2. As mentioned earlier, FADH2 enters the electron transport chain at complex 2, skipping complex 1. Therefore, it only pumps 6 protons across the membrane. Since 4 protons are required to generate one ATP molecule, the oxidation of one FADH2 molecule results in the production of approximately 1.5 ATP molecules. Similarly, Two FADH2 molecules produce about three ATP molecules. So, by the end of the third stage, the 12 electron carriers 10 NADH and 2 FADH2 collectively produce a total of 28 ATP molecules. Now that we've covered all the ATP production from one glucose molecule, let's summarize the, the total ATP yield. Glycolysis produces two ATP molecules. Krebs cycle produces two GTP molecules which are equivalent to two ATP, and electron transport chain produces 28 ATP molecules. So, in total, one glucose molecule can produce approximately 32 ATP molecules. This comprehensive ATP yield reflects the efficiency of cellular respiration in converting glucose into usable energy. I've tried to cover the entire process in detail to make it as clear as possible. In the next video, I'll be discussing the whole glucose metabolism process in detail in one go, so stay tuned. If you've learned something new from this video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to Bioscholar for more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.